Hello footies and thank you for joining us once again for Foot in Review where we've been bringing you leading analysis and opinion on all things FIFA and EAFC since 2019. Today's show is proudly brought to you by footcoaching.com, your number one place for you to get better at FC24. Also, if you want to help support this show directly, please consider joining our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash foot in review. You get a range of benefits, including exclusive merchandise, coaching discounts, and much, much more, including ad free access to the show, which means you won't be hearing this very advertisement. However, we realize that times are tough. So simply leaving us a five star review wherever you listen to us will be greatly appreciated as it helps the show grow. We'd also like to thank our Skybox holder, Peter, for his exceptional support. Now, let's get to today's show. Hello, footies. Welcome along to your latest dose of EAFC Ultimate Team Podcasting. Goodness, we are foot in review, powered by footcoaching.com. It is Tuesday, the 19th of March, as we record this episode 596. It's early in the morning, so pre content time. I am Dan Wimbush, always known as Wimby. I am joined, as always, by my partner in crime, the main man, Shack Attack. We've got lots, as always, to get into today. As EA starts to move the game in the right direction, certainly on the menu side of things, we have had an abundance of content, more content than you can shake a stick at. Um, but there are still problems, and we will get to those, including a record-breaking store pack released and the implications of that. We've also got some problems with the gameplay that people are still suffering through and our age-old frustrations around skill-based matchmaking, lack of relegation, and lots more. There's a market crash going on as well. So it is fitting that I am here with the guy that I co-host the uh, Foot and Review trading show with in Shaq. Shaq, my friend, the market is in flames, but how are you? I'm doing fabulous, especially after my the mighty Man United's FA Cup quarterfinals. I couldn't be happier. I have a scrappy game. I have to. Sorry, Liverpool fans. I, I really feel for you guys, but hey, give us this one. Hey, look, that was a game for the ages. And Reading won at the weekend as well. We beat Cambridge 4-0. Um, and whilst our, much like the market, our club is in flames off the pitch. Fingers <laughs> crossed uh, we survive as a football club. Um, but anyway, enough of the on-the-field football stuff. Let's talk about the off-the-field stuff. And this game at the moment, Shaq, there is so much content. I do the show plan every week. And it's almost half a page of SBCs and objectives to talk through. I don't want to really get into it all. Because I think, again, there is. if we were, we would literally be here for about a three-hour show. But just overall, since this promo has come out, what are your feelings? I, I sort of said to John when we were titling the show that I think it's a step in the right direction. And I think this is on course to potentially, in my opinion, be actually the best promo we've had this year. Oh, it's it, it's been a fabulous promo. I think one of the things that we're noticing is that the number of cards and also the quality of cards that are being released is incredible. I think... If you just span it back to the mini release, the mini release had two Schweinsteigers, had an insane Butro Gueno card, uh, just just as an addition to the already crazy cards that we've got over the weekend. So, look, the number of cards, the the the, the variety of cards, even within like the five star weak foot cards, the five star skill moves cards, it's just so many cards in packs, and also there's a lot of uh, pack fillers which are really high rated because how many times have you packed that level lady this, this since since uh, Friday? A huge number of times. So it's good in that regard. I think there's a lot of things. There's a lot of stuff that you can um, literally keep grinding this game and getting some cards and complete SPCs. And it's just a ever evolving grind, which is brilliant. I think content wise, knocked it out of the park. Since um, the, the Black Friday promo, this is probably my favorite promo this this year. Yeah, and the good thing about this is is that it's not just menu grinding content that we've had. You know, we had spells in the past. We've had great, even a couple of weeks ago, we had great menu content. But when you add in the Evos that have come out in the past few days, you add in the interesting objectives, like with the Sir Patrick's mm. Day material that we've had as well, plus you throw in all of your regular bits and pieces. There is there is something to cater for everybody. You know, if you have any interest in the menus, you are fine. If you like gameplay, you're fine. If you want to try out new players, you're fine. Yes, we could maybe do with something like a, a refreshable cut mode and things like that. And there are still, as I mentioned at the top of the show, lots of issues still around lack of relegation and things like that. But I think it's a step in the right direction. I think EA could quite easily have taken away a lot of the upgrade grind for this week and focused everyone and driven them to the store. But whilst I'm not happy with what they're doing in the store, I think they've very much shown that you don't have to go down that route. Um, and it's got to the weird stage. You know, I like to think of myself as someone who's on top of this game more than most. I host a show about it every week. I still don't know half the players in this promo. They, they seem to be adding players all the time. 
Um, they're just kind of hidden away. Um, I've, I pulled Kim Pembe out of a pack yesterday. I had no idea he was even in the promo team. So I think it is a good thing. And they talked about it on Friday as well. There was a lack of leaks as well. I think it was kind of it's added to the excitement. We've not really known what's coming. But at the same point, EA putting out that little roadmap has also been helpful because you're not caught by surprise. You know, we knew that things like Makalele were coming. Um, but that's in a good way when you know like a specific SBC um, is coming out without, you know, knowing every single player. I think that the the leaks not coming out has actually helped with the hype of this particular promo. I know the team got released about six or seven hours before the actual game in, in-game release, but I think it was released from a reliable source in the sense it came from the Daily Mirror or what, Daily Mail or one of the, one of the uh, newspapers. Yeah, the Mirror. The Mirror, there you go. Uh, and I think this is something, one of the things that EA has realized, that, this is just my tin, fat, tin, tin boil hat theory, is that they realized that they could actually monetize this content and if you notice the amount of work that Mirror had done on that content, they actually made videos and they probably had a lot of uh, people swarming into their, clicking into their links, their articles and stuff based on the content, so content release. So going forward, I think they will start bidding this content out to different outlets and there will be a lot of bidders and it's much more seamless. It's much more controlled. It makes a lot more sense. I think it, it, it's quite sense. It was a really sensible move. It takes the likes of all the leakers that we know. It takes them out of business, but who cares? As long as it's, as long as we're not getting content released a week before the promo, I think it's fine. If it was a couple of hours before, it's it's fine. I, I think that's completely fine. I know would, we would like that straight up uh, 6 p.m., you know, check what's in the store, check what's check what's being released, but a couple of hours before, I'm okay with it. Yeah, I don't even think it's going to be a financial consideration for EA. Like, I don't think the Mirror would have been paying them for the information, but I think the benefit for EA is if you get all this information out in the Mirror it's going to reach a, a wider audience than Foot Sheriff's Twitter account. If you're following Foot Sheriff, you probably already knee deep in this game and you're probably in. Whereas if you're on the mirror, maybe you haven't been playing the game for a while, you've been drifting away, you maybe just, you know, you're not listening to a podcast like this perhaps, but you'll see it when you're looking at your football news. You know, you're looking for, you know, a, you know thoughts on what Eric Ten Hag has said about the Liverpool game. And then it'll say, wow, EA have dropped, da, 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 for, and then you'll be interested. Go, oh, oh, that looks cool. Maybe I'll pick up EA, maybe I'll pick up this game again. Yep. That's I think where the strategy is and going out to a wider outlets rather than having this information just so narrowly monopolized. I very much get the feeling that EA are aware that the the players are dropping off from the fringes of this game. I think a lot of the strategies that they've used, as I said, the good menu content, it all seems and the, the that player feedback portal, for example, all seems to me to suggest that um mm, I think the light bulb has gone off with some of them going, hmm, we might need to do a little bit of work around the edges just to keep a- and draw in new people. I think, you know, we saw the, the the sales figures they did release and that they were down slightly on FIFA 23, although they, the revenue was up. But I think for a longer term, healthy game, you do need to keep as many people engaged as possible because there will come a point where if your content and stuff, you know, you stop attracting those whales, that spend mm. hundreds and thousands of pounds on the game and they drop off. You've not got that casual base to fall back on. So I, I like to think this is a way of EA acknowledging that maybe they've gone too far in one direction um, and are sort of circling back towards a more middle ground. But uh, that remains to be seen and not just in this game, but FC 25 and beyond. Let's move in then to some of this content that we are you know, giving thumbs up to a trio of icons is probably the big thing that people are debating whether to do, Shaq. We've got Claude Makalele, who's got a brand new foot birthday icon. Socrates, also with a foot birthday icon. And they've also released the future stars, Roberto Carlos. Uh, Carlos at 1.8 million. Socrates is at 1.6 million. Uh, Claude Makalele, in comparison, a bargain at 820k. I'm going to be completing one of the three at least, maybe two. Uh, Claude Makalele is almost done for me. Um, and then Carlos will be on the agenda, but not Socrates. I mean, out of those three, who are you tempted by? Oh, look, I really think the logical move would be Claude Makalele because he is uh, a really good qu- card. It's a, he's a card that you can't really get through this through any other way apart. And he can easily grind to 800k or to get him done, completed. And he's like one of those exquisite midfielders that's uh, low, de- low attacking and, and high defensive, which is, I think Kante is the only one that comes to mind that ever had a card that with low attacking work rates. And he is... Uh, I think he, he last year I used him and he's exactly like Kante, but a better version of Kante who could pass better than Kante could have that back then. But he's 
if I could grind, I probably would get the Claude Makaleli done because he will look lock your CDM position all the way through through dots, easily, easily. Uh, Carlos, like, look, he's a beautiful card, really nice card. But the only trouble is we have so many left backs. We have so many left backs that I really can't see myself grinding for one point one point eight million for for an SPC. That I probably look. He he will do a better job than Davies, I guess. He will do a better job than Rolfo in some regard, but. I think he's a bit too expensive. I mean, he's a lot of grind for me. And Socrates is a very, very, very interesting card. I really wanted to do him. But again, I'm holding myself back because I'm running out of fodder doing all these daily upgrades and trying to do the icon player pick and all those things. I don't really have too much fodder left in my club. And it's, it is going to be a grind. And I don't know if I have it in me to grind for a 1.6 million coin card. Yourself? Uh, so it said McLeod is almost done. I used his loan in Div 2 Rivals mm-hmm. last night. thought he was brilliant. Uh, Kante comparison, very apt. I think he's just very well-rounded. Or He gets across that pitch so quickly and he's got that strength to win the ball. Yeah, the passing range isn't great. If he pops him in front of goal, he's probably not going to score very often. But I think for that price, is very, very solid. I think it's just the fact that the CDM isn't glamour. It's, it's mm. you know, it's not a... It's not a showpiece. I don't think that that position will win and lose you games. I think there are lots of players that can do similar in ish job. But for me, it's handy because of the icon links. Um, as mentioned, I packed Kimpembe, so it helps me get those French links. And Carlos, for me, is the same. I, I very much agree with you. It, you know, you've got the likes of I've got Rolfo. Um, I've still got Batcher knocking around as well. Do I think he's a massive upgrade on those cards? Probably not, but I think the links is going to help. I love that uh, the dead ball play style plus as well. Yeah. Banging into free kicks with him adds again that fun factor. So, and with the menu grind just the way it is at the moment, I think for me it's just one that I'll just just slowly grind towards. And then again, I think that's your left back slot locked up until team of the season, and or we start getting players with three play style pluses. I didn't love his base card. I thought the physicality wasn't there. However. Um, all of the reviews and stuff I've seen since suggest that this card really kind of fixes those issues. So I will, at least as I would advise to anybody, I'm going to get the loan of that Carlos card done first, try them out for five games in rivals where people are, are less likely to quit. Um, and I'll hopefully get those five games out of the way. Because if I use them in like playoffs, with all due respect, most of the the opponents you play in playoffs, the games are over one way or the other very quickly. Either you'll get someone super high level that smash you or you, you run into players that maybe not quite at the level you're at and, you know, you pick up a, a fairly easy victory. So I'll probably use him in rivals to test him out. Um, Adama, who was on course, on this show a couple of weeks ago, he has uh, written in a question and I'm going to read it now just because it relates to Socrates. He says, have you lads tried Socrates? I'm not sure how I feel about his prize, but just wondering if he's as good as I think he is. I love him. He's a unique beast and banged me 18 goals and 17 yeah. assists in my 16 wins this weekend league. Also, is the new Quadrado massively overpriced or is it just me? Also tends to do him as I need a new right back. We will circle back to Quadrado very shortly. Yep. But I mean, you mentioned how interesting Socrates is. I've used Socrates cards in the past. I used to love his finesses. Um, me and my friend Steve, who dragged me back into this game, still to this day talk about we were playing one co-op game and he scored literally a hat trick of finesses from outside the box. Um, just a really, really good card. But it is tough, isn't it, Shaq, to commit such a large amount of coins to a player that you're not fully sure about? Look, I think all Socrates, Socrates had to do was have a position in an alternative position as a CM or a striker or something that I could consider like, oh, yeah, I can fit him easily into my squad. Right now, I have to change things around. And if I change the formation, that means I have to drop someone else out of the team to fit Socrates in. I'm still contemplating it, but I don't really. Uh, the price is not 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 the. I don't think he's overpriced. I just think he's expensive, and it's a lot to actually grind to get him done. But yeah. a five star five star Socrates is really tempting me. I'm just looking. 90, 90 pace, ninety one shooting, ninety two passing, ninety three dribbling, and eighty five physical. It's a really good card. Five star five star. It's just a. It's a peach of a card. I, I'm not surprised that Adama likes this card. It's just a. It's it's an interesting card, really interesting card. I was just going to say, I think he's the kind of card that if you have a specific gap for a player like that, it is it dents the chance to go and do. But that price point, I think you hit the nail on the head about the effort of going through and grinding that player that you're just not sure about. Like if you don't operate with a cam, is that really going to be the best use of your resources? And so they're dropping players daily. Um, 
but I mean, I mean that's a glowing review and, and Adam knows his stuff. So again, yeah. if you are on the fence about it, I mean, you can certainly trust Adam with you know his ability level. He will get the most out of a player like that that has that five star, five star. Um, but again, where, where so would you, many... where would you play him though? If, if if you were using him in your setup, he'd be perfect in your um, the three midfield setup where he's your attacking sentiment. Mm. I think that, so. Would that be right? I think See, so. in my setup. I play four four two. He just I can't play him as a striker. I don't really think I'm comfortable with him as the CM. So that's why I'm struggling to actually I'll have to change things a lot of things to actually fit him in. Yeah, I mean it's tricky. I mean I've literally and we'll come to it at formation review later, but I've just switched to a four I'm sorry guys, I've gone to the dark side. I'd gone to a four triple two. And in Ooh. that setup, a bit like you with a four four two, again it's where do you put Socrates in? Because he's not going to be one of my CDMs. Um he's probably not going to be great out wide. He's not as... I've got Messi as one of those wide cams at the moment, and he's obviously much the more best. nimble than Agile. Exactly. Um, but it's, it's a blessing. I think you could get away with him as a striker. I think especially if you're not someone that is relying on a lot of through balls, I do think you could play him. I think he would work fine next to someone like a Timo Werner um, or, a, or a faster striker like a Mbappe. Would I pair him with Eusebio? maybe mm. not because then you don't have that kind of dynamic pace option but I think he's so good and again that 5-5 five, five, he, if he gets he's, he's going to score chances and he's going to create chances as well so I think it's a player that you would find a slot for him but it, again it goes back to what you just said do you want to go through all of that effort and spend all of that fodder on a player that you're trying to crowbar in I, I'm not so sure Exactly, exactly. It, it's a beautiful card, though. It's uh, I'm just trying to fault this card. Apart from the position, I think everything else is... Oh, he's just five-star. He could be a Janela, a Janela light because he's got the skills that he... probably. I don't think he's ever had a five-star skill card before. So that's the part that's really tempting me. And it, look, it's 60 days. If you land upon some fodder, I think this might be one for the collection. If you grind towards it just as a collector's item, he might be fun. Yeah, and again, do the loan. And I said, I think any of these three will do a, you a very good job in your team. I think McAuley yeah. is obviously the, the lowest risk. I think it's always good to have that DM option. I had been using Keane, who uh, is going to be my player for player and review. And spoiler alert, I think McAuley is better than Roy Keane. Um, I think there's a reason why one of them is 150K and the other one <laughs> is 800K. Um, so yeah, I would very much endorse McAuley, Uh but I'll be talking about Keane a bit later. Let's get to then to the other player that Adam mentioned in his question, uh, Juan Quadrado, a card that had a lot of hype before it got released, Shaq, but I think, again, we look at the price point, and I think that's putting a lot of people off. Just over 500k to complete this card at the moment. He is five-star, five-star. Is, is it a price that you think is worth it for this kind of player? Look, where would you want to play him as a right-back? he's got low defensive work rates. So once he starts charging upwards, even if you have stay back at, on, on attacking, he will still start to drift forward. And then once he gets caught in the no man's land at the halfway line and action happens behind him, you will automatically start dragging your center backs out and you will be caught out in your box. So look, for the price, I know we all love a quadrado card and we always try to get a quadrado card for about 200k we just get it from the store or we just or we just buy from the transfer market 500k it's a collector's item unless you're playing one of those formations that's um five at the back or three at the back with you know those midfielders three four one two or something like that where you have four midfielders and he's your right midfielder that will do a defensive job otherwise yeah i i think he's like he's He's way overpriced for what he is. But again, that's just my opinion. I, I could be completely wrong, but happy to be proven wrong. Yeah, this is a, a player, again, I, I've loved using Quadrado cards in the past, but you do have those nightmares with that low defensive work rate that he will get caught out. And offensively going forward as well, you think, okay, well, maybe I'll try him out as a winger, but the finishing just isn't there for me. The composure is a bit low for this type, type of the game as well. And even his passing stats are good, but they're not elite. I've seen, seen some people suggesting, okay, maybe you play this as uh, that position you talked about a minute ago. If you're playing that 4 3 2 1, he could probably do a good job as that sort of attacking, more attacking midfielder. But then there are better players for this role. So it goes back to exactly what we just said about Socrates. Do you want to go and spend the money for a player you're trying to mm. crowbar in for the sake of it? Or is this a player you need? Now, look, if you're playing, um, I think this player might be perfect if you're running a five back. 
and yep. you need a proper attack. If you've been hanging on and using something like a Dharma Traore, for example, I think this is a natural upgrade on a card like that. But would I trust it? When you can go out and get cards like Pedro Porro, Molina, so cheap, and even Cafu still around to complete as well, I think I'd rather take any of those three than this Quadrado card, just as a pure right back anyway. Yeah, exactly. I think the interesting thing is he's got Anticipate, which is not not, not the plus, because the regular Anticipate, which is interesting for for him to have, and that actually adds a lot of value to me for that for that card. But his playstyle plus is slight tackle, and that kind of annoys me. If his playstyle plus was either jockey or if it was um, any of the other ones, bruiser or any of those, we could probably still make it workable. Slight tackle is the only defensive playstyle plus, and he's got whip pass, which is probably the only thing I'm look I'm considering him is because he's got whip pass. But yeah, yeah still, it's too. This is expensive, and I think overpriced as well. Yeah, and again, if you want wit fast, again, Molina, Porro, lots of other cards yep. out there have got it um, to do. And again, with a 73 strength on Quadrado as well, if he does get in that position where he's getting jostled, he's only five foot nine, uh, five foot ten average and lean as well. The heading accuracy 74, probably going to be losing a lot of backstick confrontations as well. So, but look, I don't want to overly uh, poop on this card because it is a very good card. I think it's just at that price range where. It's a little bit more than, oh, I've, I've got a couple of dupes, so I'll complete it. I think, you know, you have to commit a decent chunk of resources. And when you can do this, and I think this is a good time, would you rather do this or would you rather do the icon pick that was released this week? The the 87 plus that doesn't include base icons. The 88 plus? 88 plus, sorry, yeah. Uh, I'd rather do the icon icon pick, although my results of the icon pick haven't been that great, but I would still do the icon pick again if I had to. Yeah, I think I'm with you. Uh, although in terms of I haven't done that icon pick yet because I'm going to get Makalele done and, and start to work on Carlos uh, because they are two specific positions that I think I have a need for. I have a need for an icon there. And as much as it would be nice for me to get a winter wildcard role, let, let's be realistic about the options you're probably going to get on the usable side of things. I've seen lots of people get like Zola, Raul, cards like that. They just don't make my team. So therefore I'd rather wait and put the resources first into actual players, then move you're, on. You're a very smart man. So I had the same choice of considering Makalele or the icon pick. I went down the icon pick route and I packed myself with Stoichkov. So I'm, I'm not really thrilled by it, but that's I live by my decisions. <laughs> yeah, look, I, I think it's... I'm not saying don't do this as a gamble because I think, again, you take out all the base icons, you've certainly got a decent chance and you have, yeah. you have seen some big pulls from it. And I think I was going to mention that as well, just in general, in talking about the content at the moment, is I've actually been pleasantly surprised with the pack weight, not mm. just because I've been incredibly lucky and got 5 million coins worth of players this week, but <laughs> watching on stream, the amount of hullets I've seen, the amount of really top-tier cards that I've seen people pulling. Don't get me wrong, it's not it's not the, the glitched messy pack kind of pack weight, but it's more what you would expect. You would expect to see every, you know, 20, 30 set of uh, weekend league rewards, somebody getting a beast as opposed to, you know, you'll watch a 25 minute Aussie or Nick pack opening video and you won't see a single good player in it. Instead, you're seeing three or four good players in it, which I think is a bit more towards what the community accepts and something to keep you going. You know, you, you don't think these players don't exist because you actually see them in the wild. Um, so I've, I've been pleasantly surprised with that. Um, let's move on then. A few other cards to get and done. Um, of course, the St. Patrick's Day objective is open. Gets you, I think, four players. I think if you go through it all, maybe in five, um, just for playing the game. Great combined with the Evos that we'll talk about later on. We've had a couple of showdowns out, even though the showdown series is over, but they are still releasing them. Uh, we've got one from the uh, WSL, the Women's Super League, uh, here in the UK. Uh, Nikita Paris against Leila Uwabi. I apologise if I pronounced your name incorrectly. Uh, Manchester United play Manchester City in the WSL this weekend. Uh, Manchester City are the stronger of the two teams on paper. Um, and again, that would mean uh, Uwabi will probably be the player you most want to do from a result point of view, Shaq. But Nikita Paris is actually probably the better of the two cards. And that's reflected in the fact that she's 30k more. Exactly. Yeah, she's she's a good looking card, I think. But um, I don't even know if, with the upgrade if she actually gets into my squad. Um, Only one playstyle plus. It's yeah. It, it just it just feels like one that this this is one that's much more on the 
okay, if you're running a United past and present, or if you've got a few extra dupes and there's nothing you want to do, it's only two squads to complete it. It's uh, an 86-rated squad and an 85-rated squad. No informs required. So over the course of grinding those 82 by 20s, you could put coins in there. Five-star, four-star for Nikita Paris. But again, one play style plus at this stage in the game and its first touch. First touch, the yeah. Only, it's just, again, there are so many better cards out there that you could do and just pick up on the market because as we talked about at the top of the show, this market is crashing. So, it you know, it, it just feels kind of, it's, it's just there, isn't it? Exactly. I think it's one of those things where they just made the SBC for the sake of making the SBC to, yeah, to fill a void, which is not non-existent. It's a, yeah, if past and present United, great. Otherwise, not really worth it. And Awabi as well. I think you're at a point where if you wanted a Manchester City left back for free, go and Evo Perez. Which exactly, still, yes. I think I think you might still be able to unlock that. Um, I'm not yes. sure if the defender ones are still active. Still active. You still have a couple more days because I'm still trying to complete one of them. So you still have yeah. it for another... Oh, Oh, the defenders are gone. It's just the midfielders that are left. Okay. Well, there you go. I mean, if you haven't already done it, so maybe this would be, has a little bit more relevance. But I mean, I'm sorry, this card just isn't it. Three star skills, five star weak foot is nice, but five foot eight. The pace is okay. Again, only one play style plus, and that is Jockey. Even if she gets the plus two and you go and put them into the Evo, it's, it's, just, it's just a mid card. I'm sorry it is. Um, so let's just move on. Another showdown is that caught people by surprise as well when we saw Tottenham against Newcastle. And this game isn't until April. Actually, this is an E Premier League showdown, Shaq. So Tottenham and Newcastle are facing off in the E Premier League this weekend. Um, so this is based around the Newcastle and Tottenham teams in that. Again, two nice ish cards. Now, the benefit of these, they do have two playstyle pluses, although Miguel Almiron has flair. As one of the playstyle pluses, which I think we can unanimously agree is the most pointless one. Um, Benton Court does look better. He does have two very good playstyles that you would want in a CDM, in that he's got Bruiser Plus and Tick Attacker. Um, so that looks probably the superior of the two cards. And Tottenham are actually the favourites to win this game as well, Shaq. Oh, look, I really like this Bentanku card because he's got everything you would like. He's got the bruiser, the tiki taka, as you said. He's got the five-star weak foot. He's got the medium attacking, high defensive, so he could be a perfect CDM. I think he's got everything. And if you, if you have the fodder available, it's not much. I think it's just 146, yeah, two, two, two squads to complete. It's worth it. I think if you just want to try, if, you, if you're running a Spurs past and present or you're running a Spurs team, I think I've, I've come across quite a few Spurs teams uh, in weekend league. I don't know about you. It's maybe it's, it's because team of the Ange. It's the team, team effect. effect. And in my region, it's probably the Ange effect as well. We have a lot of uh, Spurs fans in, in Australia right now because of Ange and yeah, all power to him. So it could be, I think, but look, Bentancur, I think he's, um, yeah, he, he's quite an interesting card. I, I, I might just get this one done. Just, because he looks really interesting. Yeah, I'm exactly with you on that four star, five star. Premier League, of course, you've got that link to Werner. Uh, I've just pulled Hyunmin Son's foot birthday as well. So that's another reason why I might do it. And again, I'm completing Makalele. So he does actually look a, a fairly similar. Well, I, I think he's much more of a sort of a stronger CDM than a more agile one. Um, but yeah, especially if Spurs do get that plus two boost. Now, Newcastle mm -hmm. won two out of eight games in the group stage. Tottenham won three out of eight. But I think Tottenham also drew three games as well. So again, that's why you would consider them the favourites. I think if you were going to do either of these two cards, do Benton Core. Uh, again, a decent price at 150k to do. And I think that just about covers it. Um, just mentioning Yoshida, probably not the best card to actually use in game, but it's 20k Shack, and that is basically the market price for an 88 definitely exactly just get it done for the the fodder price and just yeah he's um he's not he's not a bad card he had a lot of play styles as well so i mean you sure you don't have to use him in game but he could be fodder price but he's kind of fun as well i think it looks interesting looks interesting looks colorful yeah looks yeah, interesting. Links, links to sour links to messy um kubo as well so yeah i mean there's there's a home for it again if you're starting a new rtg absolute dream car for you to, to you know to start straight away with i think it's a fascinating time to to start a brand new account maybe we'll talk about that a bit later but um yeah. look for the time being that wraps up our look at content apologies if we've missed something there has been so much 
<laughs> I'm sure we've forgotten a player or two in there. But for the time being, we are going to take a very short break and then we're going to come back with just some more thoughts. Um, thoughts on the store. We've got the mailbag. We've got player in review and we've got formation in review as well. We'll come up in just a minute. Hello, everyone. No ads for us to make money this time. We want to give back. In honor of our 600th episode, we are publishing that on April the 2nd. We are giving away a special edition Foot in Review Anniversary eSports jersey. We'll give away two or three during the show itself, but we're also donating to the Macmillan Cancer Support, and we are aiming for the magical number of £600 or euros. We've added a link in the show notes where you can donate directly to the cause, and you'll see a list with all the donations so far. So you can be sure that's where we'll donate at the minimum. Food Coaching will also do their part by donating directly from all sessions booked through foodcoaching.com until April the 1st. So thank you for supporting us through 600 episodes of Food and Review and help us support the Macmillan Cancer Support by donating through the link in the notes. Welcome back, everybody, or if you're one of our Patreon listeners, of course, you've not gone anywhere. It's been seamless. Um, let's crack on with the rest of the show then, Shaq. I talked about things moving in the right direction, but one direction that I think they were definitely moving in the wrong one is this latest store pack. EA again upping the ante, 750,000 coins. Um, and I think it's what, 4,500 FIFA points to open it? Yes. Uh, which I think works out at round about 45 pounds. For a pa- it was 5,000 FIFA points, sorry, yeah. 5,000 FC points. Awesome. Yep. It's it's going too far. It, it's, and bearing in mind, everybody, that... Uh, look, I'm not... I say every week, I'm never going to tell people how to spend their money. But this game is over in six months. It's over in six months. Do not spend... Or, unless you can really... You have nothing else in your that you want, really want to spend your money on. Please don't drop 40-odd quid on this pack. Please. It's strange that EA is ballsy enough to actually throw a pack in the store that's costing three times or at least two times the value of the game, the price of the game right now. Yeah. And that's just bonkers in my my mind. It's bonkers. And I'm sure there's people opening it. I'm sure there's people opening this pack. But it's just, it really beggars belief. If if this is, at this point, what are we going to have a team of the season? I wouldn't be surprised. And they're inching their way forward as well. They're inching their way forward that I'm pretty sure that at some point during the cycle, we will end up having a 12,000 FIFA point pack in this yeah. cycle before we go to 25. It's just, I, it really, really, really confuses me as to where, who's opening these packs and why are they opening these packs for? Okay. And who, and it's not like people have 750,000 coins lying around just open packs and just keep opening packs. So it's not really, that's not their target audience. It's the people that are throwing money in the game. And it's coming to levels where it's not just laughable money. It's actual money that 50, 50 pounds, 45 pounds is a, it's a fair whack of yeah. money. Yeah, it's it, this is very much aimed at the whales, isn't it? I'm sorry. The mm-hmm. whales or, or, the, or the people with a lot of disposable income. And look, I don't want you to sit here feeling guilty if you're someone that is listening to this and you, know, you have a lot of disposable income. All absolute credit to you. But unfortunately, it does have a slight knock-on effect of this sort of thing keeps going. Um, and they just get bolder and bolder and spend more and more. And whilst I, I'm absolutely fine with people opening it who've got all that money to spend or, you know, even they've saved up for it and they really want to open it, more power to you. But I do worry about the accessibility of these stores being available in the pack shack, in the store shack for those people that don't have the self-control or that do, and you know, the show going all the way back that I did with Aaron over Christmas, the people chasing that dopamine hit. It's just sat there dangling. And it's not just one either, Shaq. There are two 4,000 FIFA point packs and one 5,000 pack. And between the three of them, again, you're looking at over a uh, hundred pounds that you could drop in seconds. Exactly. And you know what bothers me more than EA dropping this is you just, I'm not asking anyone to do this, but you just go to YouTube and type ultimate birthday icon guaranteed pack. And you get our dear old content creator friends who go ahead. There's Matt HD Gamer. Uh, nothing against the guy. He's making content. But what are we trying? He's got his title says, what do you get from 20 foot birthday icon packs? Oh. 
It's like eight hundred pounds they made straight away off one video. But exactly. And what are we doing? We're just we're just okaying. It's just another pack that we want people to open. And I I think one of the things look for all the things that Nick around the foot market does. I think that's one thing that I really respect him for the fact that he stands up to. I was watching his video where he was telling people actively not to open the pack, and he didn't. He didn't want people to open the pack on his stream, which is. Yeah. GG, credit to him, really credit to him. Yeah. But some of these guys really need to get their head checked in. Like, if this is the case for for a 5,000-point pack and yeah. people are all excited about, what do you get from a five? Oh, it's just, it, this is this yeah. is disappointing, to say the least. It's, it's a no-win situation, isn't it? Again, and I'm more talking about the, the more vulnerable members of the community, those who may be just kind of not um, in the right financial position or those easily impressionable people, uh, you know, who shouldn't legally be be gambling it's you know if they see these packs open and something great comes out of it it's only going to increase that fomo factor but i'm in i'm in two minds because i absolutely respect ea's ability to make money off of people that is fine but as i said i just think there is just so much of it that i can just see people that don't have that control being taken you know being taken advantage of just by the accessibility of this and it doesn't sit right with me and i agree with you i love nick stand that he's just like no i'm not i'm not doing it i mean adam asked in the chat is the pack worth it with coins if you have 2.3 million actually maybe like it might be worth it i mean it's 20 rare gold players 85 or higher three guaranteed 89s and one guaranteed ultimate birthday icon if there is nothing you want to do and you are sat there on a couple of million coins that is the scenario where i think shack where you just go you know what i'll have a you know i'll have a go why not? Because again, it's not hurting you. It's it's just coins. It, it's just coins. It's it's when you get to that five that you know you're having to put in forty five. And if you talk about like the minimum wage here in the UK is I think about ten eleven pounds. That's like a, a, a minimum a, like four hours of work. Imagine if you were doing a shift at you know your supermarket or whatever. Four hours you've worked there, and it is over in ten seconds. And you've got a foot birthday closer um, and a load of junk. Team. Yeah, yep, exactly. This is the thing. If all those icons, if the icons that were presented in that pack were, say, let's, let's just give an example. It was Hullet, Blanc, Capita, uh, uh, Carlos Alberto, for example, Henri, and Van der Sar, and Schweinsteiger, for example. So the worst case you could get was Schweinsteiger. Fair enough. You could end up with a closer who's 100K. You could end up with Keen who's 140K. Why? Like... <laughs> Just. Yeah, it's again. Look, I I don't want to sit here and, and bash it. EA are doing te technically nothing wrong, and again, they are a business and they are marketing the game. And there are people that do have this disposable income and that do want to spend their money on this thing, and they can do so in a safe environment. Absolute credit to it, but I just think it's just it, it's just a bit too accessible to me. And I know that that the comeback will be where well, there are controls and things like that. And it's up to per parents to make sure that their kids aren't doing stuff. But I just don't, it doesn't sit easy with me when there are th so many and so often, um, this isn't just a, you know, a once in a game opportunity. This is a becoming a, a once in a week or once every three day opportunity. So, but look, let's move on from that. Let's talk about stuff that yeah. doesn't sit so right with us to something that does. Uh, we moaned about this on the show. Was it uh, the last week or two weeks ago, Shaq? Evos. Evos have been left for dead and they have arisen. Like the Undertaker, they are back <laughs> in a big, big way. I am delighted. I've been able to take um, two or three Reading players back up into the usable tier and I'm absolutely delighted. Again, it's given us something to do on the game. You know, it's given us an excuse to play extra games of rivals, to play games of squad battles. Uh, and again, some people will still be annoyed because a lot of Evos don't fit in. There's not been a lot of love for defenders, for example. But mm. again, I'm a big fan of what they're doing. Although again, 200,000 coins for one of these Evos is a little bit toppy. It is a bit expensive for that. And I think uh, even I've been excited to get these Evos done. For example, there's, uh, I think there's an Evo where you can actually upgrade Rashford. There's an Evo that you can upgrade Varan. Yeah. I'm looking forward to getting these done just as a collector's item, just to put away and just at some point do a pass and present Man United squad just to have fun with. So that part I'm looking forward to. But um, yeah, I, th I think from an Evo content, it's really interesting because as soon as you had the rant, uh, Dan, 
as soon as you had the rant, literally the next day onwards, EA started pleasing you with evil content, which is great. <laughs> it's amazing for people like you. But it was just Power literally how rock the pod. Exactly. It's two weeks ago. Right now, it was you just completely going off at EA about the evils, and yeah, the very next day, it was evil, evil, evil town, and. Look, Evo's have been, the content has been great. Now, this is one of the things right now, half the reason, as you said, the market's also getting impacted is because of the fact that Evo's, there's so many Evo's to get done, and these Evo's look like pure quality. So, yeah, it's really, it's really interesting times right now. Yeah, the only thing, and again, I'm going to have to be nitpicky. It's just of my nature. I'm sorry. The, the, it's the secret stuff one is the one you're talking about that I think Rashford fits into. It costs 200,000 coins or 1,000 FC points. But you have to play, I think it's 20 games to get this done. And I'm sorry, if you're paying outright, make it quick. Like, I can understand free Evos. Have a bit, you know, the trade-off is, okay, it's free, but we're going to make you play a lot for it. Don't make somebody that's paying for all for this to have to go through that kind of a long grind. It just it doesn't, doesn't really seem to compute with me. But look, overall, I can't say enough good things about this. It's great. The only shame is, is that I'm not the biggest fan of this card design. Where do, where, where do you sit on this on this card design? Not the biggest fan, but I think, um, we, uh, to be fair, I, I dislike the actively dislike the other Evo one that we had. For example, the one that you put the showdown cards in. I yeah. don't. I really don't like those Evo. The design looks really bad. I would rather have this design as opposed to that one. But um, yeah, still not not ideal. It would be nice. And again, this is the kind of thing that EA could put very easily into the store that I think that would go down really well with the community. I think there should be um, an Evo, the same way they've done with the red picks, just put other card designs of, as shells available in the store so you can have whatever Evo you want in whatever style you want. If you want it to be the Team of the Year card design, great. If you want it to be the Centurion's design, great. And again, uh, again I've got no problem paying 50,000 coins for that. Or even a hundred hundred FC points or whatever. That's that's can the kind I, of guaranteed content that I'd like. Absolutely, I'm completely with you. And can I just say something really stupid for a lot of people? If EA provides dynamic images, just the, just a skin, just a dynamic image that I want can put on the cards that I want, the cards that I own, I'm happy to pay for it. <laughs> I'm really happy to pay for it. I, I love that stuff. Yeah. And this is um, the kind well, of, but that's the kind of microtransaction that I'm. I've got zero problem with in just gaming in general, in life in general. If you're paying for something that you know exactly what you're going to get, you you want it for that reason, and it's unlockable either through game, you know, real world currency or game currency, go nuts. Put out whatever you want. I, I don't to this day understand, Shaq, why they don't have like a, a massive store of Man United retro kit, Liverpool retro oh. kit, and everything. And, and again, that is, a, to me, it's a much better way for them to be making their money and another revenue stream for them, then maybe they can ease off on, on the casino. So, but look, I, I don't want this to, you know, give them, give them free ideas here. Exactly. But I think those, 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 those ideas make so much more sense. Look at the other games. Like most of the other games are popular with microtransactions is that you just get a skin. You're just paying for something that just looks good. That has no effect and you know exactly what you're getting. And as you said, the the jerseys was something that was popular i think back in the day with uh, you could un, you could actually unlock the jerseys based on jerseys and balls based on your experience that you've had in the game yes yeah. and i think that was beautiful you could get all the man united kits you could get the milan kits and you could just try that stuff on and if you pack a hullet put that jersey on and make a past and present milan squad and it's yeah we, that's the sort of stuff that's just gone Easy, easy. And Adam says uh, in the chat, of course, you can listen live if you are a member of our Discord, which is absolutely free to join as well right now. Adam says, give me the Summer Heat card design shell. Oh, oh the vibes. Yes, yes, yes. Retro, retro cards. Do it, do it. Look, we're giving you these ideas for free, EA. We're giving them you for free. Um, but we are rapidly running out of time on this show. So let's let's finish off. And we, we just talked about Evos. Uh, and that leads us into Ingby's question in the mailbag. He says, do you think your general gameplay gets affected much and makes you do worse when you're doing Evos while doing Rivals and Champs? I think this is a two-pronged question, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll send it your way first, Shaq. What do you think? Oh, 100%. It affects you because uh, I've been trying to Evo Athenia, Athenia, or however you pronounce her name, and she starts as my right wing. And the amount of times that she messes things up and I have to bring her off and put someone else back in, 
and that whole momentum, it takes me a while to get that momentum going by the time I get this, the sub done and come back in. Sometimes I forget, forget to do the sub. And one of the, the bits of the evolution that I was stuck at is I had to score, I had to win by a two goal margin. So I score a goal, Athena is in the squad, I get a rage quit, it doesn't count. So it's just, I'm not really enjoying doing these things in, in champs or in rivals and it really is affecting my gameplay. So I'm really considering, but again, I'm trying to stay away from squad battles as much as I can. So I'm, I'm struggling there, but I, it does affect your game. That I honestly believe it affects your game. Your no, I, abs- I, no, I absolutely agree with you. I think especially for the objectives that are like score X goals or assist X goals, I would always advise people just to get those objectives knocked off in as few squad battles as you possibly can. Because the other downside is, and I do most of my Evos through squad battles unless the objective is play X games in Rivals and Champs. But I think John has touched on this point in the past is that the more you go into other game modes like squad battles and friendlies and things like that, the more it will impact your competitiveness because, again, the AI behaves in a much different way to a regular player. You you start to pick up bad habits again, you know, because you can spam more through balls and get more luck playing against, you know, poor teams on squad battles rather than having that sort of you're not in that groove of playing, mm-hmm. you know, top level opponents. So yeah, I do think absolutely. Um, and Adam says in the chat, he's doing the St. Patrick's Day objective just now, not touching squad battles. It's a grind. I feel your pain, man. <laughs> um, but, but, to, but, that, but to those people again, and I, I appreciate that, Adam, and I appreciate what you're saying, Shaq. I'd also just say to people, do you really need to do those? Like, again, don't, do you really need to do a thing yet? Is she really going to get into your team? Do you really need any of those St. Patrick's Day cards? Now, if you are I'm desperately scraping together every single card you can for an SBC or something, but maybe. But otherwise, yeah. like John says, like he just doesn't do it and it doesn't affect him. So I think, yeah. again, if, if you're trying to be at the top of your game, maybe it's just worth leaving him alone. Can, can I just tell you about Athena? Um, I came back from my holiday, uh, whatever, the trip, the, the time away from the game, the holiday from the game, came back on the 2nd of March, put the game on. The first game I played was against uh, a squad that had Athena, a five-star, five-star Athena, and she just completely destroyed me. <laughs> and straight away, I started the EVO. Where, uh, two weeks on, I <laughs> still haven't completed the EVO. And now I'm, I've done so much that I'm stuck whether I continue or just leave it. And I'm going away to Fiji in a couple of days' time, and I'm not really sure if I should grind before I go or just let it elapse. <laughs> That's where I'm stuck. It is tough. And Adam points out the 84 by 10 for the main reward is the only reason you're doing it. But again, there's there's so much fodder out there. Again, we're getting 382 times 20s out there at the moment. You don't... Okay, I understand the lure and the appeal of it. But again, if it's going to throw off your game or it's actually making you you know, not enjoy games as much. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. Because I said, if that was the only place you could ever get an 84 by 10 and it was a, a rare, oh, once in a lifetime opportunity, once in a game time opportunity, great. You know, if it was a 87 by eight or something like that, I'd be like, yeah, you know, make the sacrifice, do it. But again, it, we're getting packs like that all the time now. So again, just have a think again, if it's, but again, if you're someone that likes doing squad battles, like I don't mind squad battles, so I'll, I'll just do it there. Um, right, anyway, final thing before we wrap up the show. Um, I'm, we're not going to do formation review again, although I have been using the 4222 that is available to our Patreon members, and I've been really enjoying it. I was getting struggled a lot, struggling a lot with getting counterattacked at the moment. I've moved to that, and it's a much more solid formation. It suits me really well. Again, it's one of the just one of the perks you get, patreon.com forward slash foot in review. Um, all the details are there. John talks you through some of the good and the bad of it as well. So recommend it there. Um, we're going to do very briefly player and review, Shaq. And you've got a player that has been out for a long time, but we're going to bring this player up just because they are finally expiring in the next week. Exactly. And I really, uh, it, it, it kind of, it's weird that we're talking about this player right now. That She's been around for almost two months. It's Sour. Our, she, Sour Team of the Year icon, She's just been incredible for me. She, uh, every single week I go in thinking, yep, it's time to replace her and trying to bring someone else on. And she's just incredible. And I use her as my attacking CM in a 4-4-2. And I kid you not, she scores, scores a goal a game, at least a goal a game for me. And she just blocks the ball, stops the ball, stops people from attacking, scores goals, passes the ball really well, has the first start, has everything that you need. 
in a midfielder and is really I'm finding it extremely hard to push her out of the squad because she does everything she's a jack of all trades and a master of all as well so uh, I I strongly if you're looking for him I know we're chock a block with midfielders but if you're really 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 considering Sawa you started Sawa and you're wondering whether to go ahead with it I'm still loving her absolutely loving her yeah, available for another four days. She expires on the 23rd, which I believe is Saturday. Um, again, has those two playstyle pluses. Playstyles that have been really boosted as well with this recent winter update, uh, spring update, sorry, in that the press proven and relentless are her playstyle pluses. Both things that got, um, the relentless got a little bit of a nerf, but it's, it's still more important still than it was. Yeah, and press proven even more important than it was. This card still gives me nightmares. The amount of time this card will just make that run into the box and score a goal for somebody is so annoying against me, as someone that didn't complete this card. Um, so I have to endorse it um, on that basis. Um, I'm just going to very quickly give <laughs> my thoughts on Roy Keane. Keane, a player I absolutely loved um, watching, growing up watching football in the 90s. Loved his passion, his heart. Um, I still love his punditry now. <laughs> um, so for that reason, it was a very sentimental pickup. Bought him for about 250. He's, of course, dropped to 150K now because the entire market is in flames. Very good, very solid, does everything nicely. Um, the tackling is obviously fantastic, decent strength. The passing is better than you think it would be. The pace is what I think lets this card down. It's just not that quick off the mark. Uh, and for that reason alone is the reason why I've gone for a more sort of nimble, agile midfielder in Makaleli. But I think, again, for 150K, I don't think you can go wrong. If you are looking for that CDM, you've got a Prem team, you're an old you know, you're a United fan. This card would definitely not let you down. I'm talking about the difference between, I'd probably give Keane maybe 8 out of 10 and Makalele 8.5, 9 out of 10. So it's again, that whole nitpickiness of when you have got a very top, top tier team, as I'm lucky to have at the moment. It's those very small margins and that's just the reason. And I should say as well, I was using the five-star weak foot version of Keane, which is the more expensive of the two. And again, why you would want a five-star skill move Roy Keane, I'm not sure, just for the lols maybe. Um, but yeah, I get a good pickup. And if you pack him and you're untradeable, give him a go. I think uh, you'll be pleasantly surprised. I think the, the five-star skills one is slightly faster than the five-star weak foot one. That's yeah, the only thing I can think of, yeah. Um, so yeah, again, a nice little like, icon. Again, I think all of these, I think the nice thing about this promo Again, I feel bad for giving so much praise to EA today. <laughs> but I, the nice thing is that I think just about every single player that has been released in this, icon-wise, is good. I think all of them you could put in your team without you know having a real negative effect. I'm not saying they're all going to be the best players, but you know what I mean. Exactly. And hey, I think I think Fubin was playing some tricks on me. The five-star weak foot keen as well as the five-star... Uh, skill moves keen have exactly the same pace, oh, exactly the same stats. Yeah, I yeah, there's there's no difference apart from the skills or yeah, that's it. There's no other difference. So yeah, there's yeah. absolutely no difference there. Very much agree. And again, I think he's him alongside Miroslav a closer are the two cheapest ones. But I think again, I don't think that closer is a terrible card either. So look, that does wrap up the show. Again, lots to look forward to. The guys will be back on Friday slash Saturday with another show. Thank you so much, all our Patreon supporters. Thank you to those of you who are supporting us in the build up to episode six hundred as well. That is very much appreciated by all of us as well. Come and join the Discord if you're not in there. Some cracking chats going on. Great support network. Um, I kind of touched about it on the intro. We didn't really have time to get into it again, but I had a miserable run in Rivals on Sunday night, perhaps, I think it was. And I think I won uh, one game in 10 in Division 2, just getting just beaten down horribly. And it's, it's having that community to be able to go to and, and get your, your frustrations out and talk things over with that makes a big difference and sort of gets you back on an even keel. And that's what the Discord's there for. It's there to celebrate when we're successes. You know, it's, you know, there's no shame if you get a decent pack pull, if you're doing well or get 16 wins or whatever. Everyone's there to celebrate. And again, if you're getting beaten down, there's not like, get out of here, you scrub or you noob. Get good. It's not like that. It's, uh, you know, talk us through where you think it's going wrong. Like, or even if you just want to rant, it's a safe space. So can't recommend the community enough. And thank you to everyone who makes up that very special community, not just in that Discord, of course, but all the people that follow this show, that leave us the five-star reviews. 
that sign up for foot coaching that you know leave positive reviews it is so very much appreciated we all have to do our bit to make the world a nice kinder place shack exactly yeah we, we we all have to we all have to and i especially goes across to those people that you come across in champs if you're kicking the ball to your keeper just put it in the net just put it in the net yeah Agreed. Agreed. And those those of you that quit a nil nil, or to the guy that quit when I came back from three one down, straw three three, and got a penalty, and then quit on me. Yeah, you need some managed democracy in your life. <laughs> nice one. Nice so, one. So that's for all you hell divers out there, um, still fighting the good fight on two fronts. Uh, but look, before we get into a, our discussion on our loadouts and things like that, maybe we'll do a spin off hell divers show. Me and Shaq. Oh, yeah, I would love to. I would absolutely love to. <laughs> uh, but in the meantime, we will keep talking about EFC uh, for the time being. Again, I do think it is a step in the right direction. There are still many, many problems with this game. And I understand those of you that are walking away, that are frustrated, that are sick of inconsistent servers, are sick of inconsistent gameplay, that are turned off by big store packs. You are very, all those opinions are very, very valid. And I don't want to. Uh, say that anybody is wrong or, or anybody is right either we just have our opinions we share them on this show and we try and do so in the most balanced way possible but i am ranting and rambling so that it's time for us to go shack only one thing for us left to do drop it we are going to drop it drop it F you. F you. F F F you. F you. T. 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 T